amidst World War I, two soldiers receive an order that seems impossible for them to fulfill. They only have limited time to deliver the letter and they must reach the place safely to save the lives of their comrades. Will they make it in time to deliver the letter and save the battalion? Hello and welcome to our channel. So today we'll recap and review a war drama movie called 1917. Let's check it out. The movie starts with Tom, a British corporal, awakened from his nap under a tree by his commanding officer who orders him to choose a partner and to go to the commander's bunker. He awakens William, sleeping next to him, and takes him along. When they get to General Aaronmore, he gives them an urgent mission to deliver a note to Colonel Mackenzie with an order to cancel a planned attack for the following day, which would put the lives of 1,600 men at risk, including Tom's brother Joseph a lieutenant. They are instructed on which path to take and given the necessary supplies for their journey. They are also handed a memo to deliver to Major Stevenson. As soon as they emerged from the bunker, Tom began running. When William asked if they could relax, Tom said no because his brother's life was in danger. Even though William tries to explain his plans, Tom's mind is clouded because he only thinks about his brother and getting to their destination as quickly as possible. Tom's initial reactions are shock and worry for his brother, which is normal. But even if they've been prepared for the war, that doesn't mean he's okay with his brother's life being at risk. They go by a lot of soldiers who are just standing around. Then, after a very long trek, they finally reach York's the frontline commander. Yorks has informed them that Major Stevenson was shot two nights ago and has instructed them to contact Lieutenant Leslie. Tom hands Leslie the letter, but Leslie warns them it's a trap. He assumes they're aware since they're the first to face an enemy. He leads the two men to the cliff and briefs them on how to proceed. Disappointed, the lieutenant bids them by and returns to his bunker. Both Tom and William decide to climb. Will asks Tom to go ahead and take the lead before they reach the peak, and Tom does so. They had to crawl to get out of there. They pick their way slowly through the camels, heading toward the weird fence to avoid getting tangled up in any of them. Once at the sap trench, they discover the rotting remains of humans. They keep moving on while attempting to avoid being spotted by potential opponents. It appears that everyone has left town. And naturally, they know their attackers can spring a trap any time. After all, they're in the middle of a war. Reaching the German trench, they see that the enemy has vanished, but only temporarily. They are exploring an underground barracks when they come across a tripwire the Germans had planted there. A rat runs through, setting off an explosion that nearly kills William before Tom rescues him and the two of them make their way out of the tunnel. They see that the Germans had their weapons destroyed before they left. When they were ready to go, they released a flare from the pistol. Finally, they came to a farmhouse that has been abandoned and is now wholly run. To ensure that no one is home, they decide to split up as they approach each house. On the left in a vacant barn, William spotted a fresh cow's milk jug. As he fills his water jug with cow's milk, they see an aerial dogfight and the crash of a German plane in their direction. They manage to pull the pilot to safety during the plane's destruction. William wants to kill the pilot, but Tom encourages him to grab some water instead. William turns his back on them and heads to the nearest well, but he overhears Tom yelling from behind. He saw the pilot stab Tom, so he shot the pilot dead. It's saddening that even if they showed compassion to the pilot, he still treated them as enemies. The kindness they've offered was paid for with nothing but atrocity. He rushes in Tom's direction and makes a desperate attempt to save him, but Tom's wound is too severe and he's losing too much blood too quickly. As Tom is dying, he tells him to write his mother a letter and ensures she gets it. He retrieves Tom's rings, dog tag, and letter from Aaron Moore. When three soldiers see him carrying Tom's body, they help him. A lieutenant from another unit instructs him to join them because they're all going to the same place. He then takes William to the last truck, which he then climbs up. He sits in the second to last spot at the back of the truck and patiently listens to the soldiers' stories. Their truck stops suddenly and William gets out of it. He sees that one of the wheels is jammed and begs the soldiers to help him free it by pushing the vehicle. They get back in the truck and keep going. When questioned about where he was headed, he explained that he was on his way to deliver an order to the second Devons beyond Ekust to prevent them from falling into a German trap. Their truck comes to a second stop because the bridge near Ekust had been wrecked, prohibiting trucks from crossing. William decides it's time for him to leave them. The damaged bridge can still be crossed, but only with extreme caution. Halfway there, he hears a shot coming straight toward him. He jumps onto the railing across the water and hides under the bridge to avoid all the bullets coming at him. He walks underneath it, 
Aware of the danger, he moves cautiously and aims in the direction the shots are coming from. He moves forward, going into an empty two-story building and straight to the second floor. There he finds the sniper and kills him just as the enemy shoots at him, hitting his helmet. He took a hard blow to the head and passed out. When he woke up, it was already dark outside. He walks through the destroyed town using flares to show him the way. A German soldier spotted him, but he was able to sneak away through a secret door and into a hidden room where a French mother and her baby were taking refuge. As payment for her healing his wounds, he offers her his farm's canned goods and milk. He hears the chimes of a nearby clock and realizes that time is running out. The woman begs him not to leave, but he insists on going. Upon his exit, he was met by members of the German army. He kills one of the soldiers and then runs away from the other two by jumping into the river. The current carried him to the river's edge and down to the waterfall. He grabs a nearby log and holds it tight as his life depends on it. The cherry blossoms have started to fall. Since there is no longer any movement in the water, he swims downstream to the river's end. The weight of his bags slows him down, so he takes them off so he can swim more efficiently. Once on land, he gets up and begins a slow, cautious stroll through the silent, dense woodland. He keeps going and follows the path until he comes across a group of soldiers resting. He sees that the soldiers have gotten to their feet and are moving away from him. One soldier spots him and asks where he is from. He states that he must locate the Devons, to which the soldier responds that they are the D Company of the Second Devons, which is in the final wave of the attack. When he inquires as to the location of the colonel, he is informed that he may be found on the front lines. He starts running in the directions the soldiers are marching, but quickly realizes the line is too long. He squishes his way in and finds a commanding officer, giving orders to everyone. He tells him there is a direct order to stop the attack, but the commanding officer screams at him and sends him away. He runs as fast as he can through the dugout where the Germans have started to attack. He continues searching for Mackenzie despite hearing explosions and feeling the ground shake. He asks a soldier where the colonel is and the colonel tells him that he is 300 yards up the line. As the explosions continue, he realizes that he has to get to the colonel as fast as possible to give him the direct order from Aaronmore. So he confidently strides across the open field to the farthest line. The bravery that he'd shown is beyond imaginable. He walks into the open fields where he know he could be shot dead just to fulfill his mission. What a brave man you are, William. As he approaches the barracks where Mackenzie is, two soldiers stop him. When he realizes they've ordered the second wave to strike, he shoves the soldier holding him back and runs inside, screaming to get the colonel's attention. He tells the colonel about the direct order and gives him the letter. Mackenzie says he can't stop the attack because his men are already on the run. He reveals that the Germans have been plotting this for months. The Germans hope that they'll launch an attack so that they can ambush and kill them. Germans think they're wise enough with their tactics, but alas, these men are wiser. Stunned by the news, Mackenzie grabs William's letter, reads it, and decides that he must stop the attack. He orders the Major General to cease the attack and treat the wounded. The Major General acknowledges this and instructs the front line to retreat. Mackenzie tells him to have someone treat his wounds. Then he exits the bunker and asks the Major where Tom's brother Joseph may be found. He is given directions on how to find him. He goes up to the front to see where the Lieutenant is there. As he looks around, he notices that wounded soldiers are being transported to the makeshift medical tents. He sees him giving orders to his men, so he calls him. When he says he is from the 8th, Joseph's face lights up and he asks him if he knows Tom. He responds that he was assigned to accompany him on their journey. Realizing that Tom is no longer among them, Joseph turns away from him, fighting back the tears. William reaches into his pocket removes Tom's dog tags and rings and hands them over to him. Furthermore, he tells Tom that he plans to inform their mother about his bravery. Joseph expresses his gratitude by offering a handshake. As things wind down, William relaxes in a tree close to the tents housing the medical staff treating the injured soldiers. He has finally reached his destination and is exhausted from the journey. The movie showed the bravery and compassion of the two soldiers sent on the mission. It seemed like an impossible mission, but they did it. Even if Tom didn't make it to the end, William would have died if it hadn't been for him. Please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we upload. Also, remember to suggest movies that you want us to recap on the future in the comments down below.